How's everybody doing? Session number two. The name of today's session is Storytelling and Evangelism Behind the Scenes, Establishing a Social, social Culture for Effective Talent Branding. My name is Melody Chung and I am a global talent brand consultant here at LinkedIn. And I am thrilled to have the opportunity to announce our four speakers for the session. First up to speak will be uh, Janine Spear and Ashley Diel from Lululemon, who've traveled here from Vancouver and Toronto. So welcome to the United States for today's presentation. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're going to share a story about how Lululemon has maintained their authentic culture after growing from just one store on top of a yoga studio to being a global brand. And next up joining us will be Corey Edwards and Natalie Kessler here on the left from Adobe. <laughs> Natalie and Corey will be sharing their story uh, as well and they are part of a team that their CEO has tasked to make Adobe one of the most social brands in the world. So with that, I'd like to turn uh, the presentation over to Janine and uh, Ashley. And just be sure as well, guys, to uh, rate, uh, make sure to fill out your surveys and rate the presentations at the end of the day. So that's really important feedback for us. Ashley and Janine, take it away. Thanks, Melody. So Ashley and I are so excited to be here with you today and share a little bit about Lululemon and also give you an opportunity to not just hear about our culture, but to some extent experience our culture with us. So to that end, I'm going to start right off with a ritual that we use at Lululemon to kick off any meeting, big or small, uh, that we have, and that is a clearing. Has anyone heard of a clearing before? Okay, good, you guys are going to help me. So a clearing is really an opportunity to take what's in the background of your mind and bring it to the foreground so you can look at it figure out what to do with it, and clear it away to be really present for the conversation at hand. So we're just going to do this, so, so for fun. How many of you have traveled here to San Francisco in the last 24 hours, might be feeling a little tired, hands up, don't be shy, might be feeling a little tired, dealing with time changes, okay, great. So notice that and then consider what you might want to commit to in order to just put that aside for today. So it may be that you need to know, okay, I need my eight hours tonight. I got six last night. So I'm going to go to bed at 11. I'm going to miss that second cocktail. Or it could be that you need to know that at six o'clock tonight, you're going for a run because that's going to boost your energy back up for the rest of the week. So just notice for yourself if, if that resonates and if you want to make a commitment about that. How about anyone feeling a little uneasy about being disconnected for three days, not in the office, <laughs> right there, not in the office. I know this morning I was like, you know, Ashley's pulling me out of my hotel room. I'm just checking those last emails before, before I got into the preparation for today. So if you're feeling a little bit disconnected, then consider what do you need to commit to? So perhaps it's at the end of the day, I'm going to spend half an hour and just clear out those priority messages that I got. Or it could be, I'm going to send that last thing right now, and I, I'm giving you permission. If there's something you need to send right this second to be present for the rest of the day, just do it. Get it out of your mind and move forward, okay? Lastly, is there anyone in this room who has read or heard something about Lululemon in the media over the past 12 to 18 months? Right. So. What I'm going to suggest or request is that you commit to just putting that aside for a moment, <laughs> okay? Because you, it's still going to be there. You can just put it off to the right. Um, but my request would be that you just listen to us without any of that noise, with an open mind. And we're here for the next few days. We can answer any questions that you have um, after the session. Fair? We clear? Can you feel how that feels just a little bit different, right? So, so here we are. Okay, great. So we are going to spend the next bit of time together here telling you a bit more about who we are. We're going to tell you about our people and our culture, and most importantly, how all of that comes together to create what we call the law of attraction. Okay, so as Melody mentioned, the first Lululemon store was opened by our founder, Chip Wilson. Anyone heard of Chip Wilson? Yeah? <laughs> And Chip opened the first store on top of a yoga studio in March of 1999. So back in 1999, Lululemon was really meant to solve a specific problem, which was good-looking technical apparel for women, particularly women who were into yoga or running, 
Okay, so that, that was the original problem that we set out to solve. In 2007, Lululemon became a public company, and we now have over 263 stores in five countries worldwide. Since 2002, we've grown from 150 people working for Lululemon to over 7,600 people, and that number is growing any day, every day. So how many of you are, have worked in high growth companies? Okay, great, so you'll know a little bit about what that feels like. And we're gonna talk as we go through the presentation about how our recruitment efforts have really been so important in us maintaining the culture that we have as we've grown from 150 people to 7,600. Okay, great. So I'm gonna pass it over to Ashley, who's gonna talk a bit about our people practices and how these things start to come together. Ash. Thank you, Janine. So when we started as a company, Chip actually had a vision to elevate the world from mediocrity to greatness. And the way he saw that happening was through people. And this has been ingrained into our culture and into our operating principles since day one. And there are a couple things about our people that I wanted to share with you. One thing is our vision and goals practice. So if you were to start at Lululemon tomorrow, you would sit down and you would start to write a 10-year vision for your best life. And once you're really clear on what that looks like in 10 years, then you would ladder that back and you'd be given the coaching to create goals that would help you get there. And goal setting's not revolutionary. I'm sure a lot of you do goal setting in your organizations, but what's really special about this is we set goals in our career, but then also in our personal lives and in our health. And we also know that 10 years from now, not everyone sees themselves at Lululemon, and that's okay. So what is the work that they can be doing right now that will really set them up and help them get where they want to be? And we find that that has an amazing impact on engagement when people are doing the work today that's helping them get to the future that they really desire. And what I've witnessed in my last eight years at Lululemon is that as people set these goals and share them, that they start to happen faster than you ever could have imagined. And I actually have a personal story to share. Last winter, I set a three-year goal to speak at LinkedIn Talent Connect. And I thought, okay, that's really big, that's scary. And I separately had a personal goal to go to San Francisco. It was a city I'd never been to. So, when the registration came up for speakers this summer, someone on my team emailed me and she said, you have to apply. You have to just do it now. And here I am today, and obviously I need to write a new three-year goal. <laughs> So vision and goals is one big piece. Um, we also wanted to talk to you about our leadership philosophy. So at Lululemon, we believe that every single person is a leader, and we give them access to the same training and tools and opportunities to really develop that in themselves. And we also hold them accountable to that. So an example is, it doesn't matter what your role, you're in charge of developing and getting that successor ready for when you move on to the next role. So this sounds a little bit like I'm talking to you about leadership development and you might wonder, isn't this a recruiting conference? But this is our recruiting secret. We have found that leadership comes to life and when people are living their best life, they want to share it. And it is magnetic. People want to be a part of it. So, a couple of things that we do. We ask our stores to host and manage their own Facebook pages. And on those pages, they can share about products that they have in their store, they can share about events they're creating, but they can also talk about the individuals. So, the people who work there and what they're doing in their lives. We also ask that every leader in the company, every manager, has a, uh, sorry, a LinkedIn profile that really captures who they are, uh, not just their job description, but what they believe in, what they care about. And we actually have a quote here from one of our store managers that is straight from her LinkedIn profile, and I really love it. I wanted to share it with you. She says, I'm in pursuit of crushing my goals and helping those around me do the same. 
I believe in sweating once a day, dancing at work, and living a life where I get to be who I am 100% of the time. Beyond social media, we also ask our people to share who they are in person and create events and experiences. And so I wanted to tell you about one event that actually three people in our organization created, and it's called Beyond Luan. So if you don't know, this stretchy fabric that you see all the time, that's Luan. And the idea of this event was, let's create a space for people to share their goals that they're achieving outside of work, so beyond the Lululemon walls, and invite people in the community and our friends and family to come and celebrate. And it was such a success that now we've actually run these events in Canada, in the US, and we've even done one in Australia. So what I would say to you about all of this is it doesn't matter what size your organization is or what your culture might be, I really want you to think about how you invest in your people and then how do you share their stories in a way that's really true and authentic to your organization. So it could be blogs, it could be social media, or it could be an event but it probably won't be called Beyond Luan, and that's okay. So now I'm gonna pass it back over to Janine, and she is going to talk about our culture. So I joined the Lemon in March of 2011, and I spent the first couple months touring stores in North America to get a feel for how we run our business, you know, what the vibe is in the stores, to meet a lot of our people. And what I learned right off the bat is that I didn't even need to look at the logo outside the door. As soon as I walked into the store and sat you know, with the people and was standing at our pant table, I knew I was in a Lululemon store. I could tell by the music, I could tell by the conversations that we were having and just that general, we call it the kitchen party um, that was happening. And in June of 2011, I, I was done my tour and was back in Vancouver where our um, support center is. And something very exciting was happening in the city of Vancouver in June of 2011. It was the Stanley Cup Finals. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Stanley Cup, we're talking hockey. And for those of you who don't know a lot of Canadians, hockey is a very big deal. <laughs> So here we are in Vancouver, June of 2011. Why this matters is because the Vancouver team was in the finals. It was the Stanley Cup final, and we were pretty sure we were gonna take it home. And so what does Lululemon do? Well, because we're a company whose culture is built on community relationships and celebrating with our people and supporting athletes, we shut down the office. And, and I you know, was told by someone, oh, Janine, you gotta go. There's something happening out on the lawn. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go out onto the lawn. And the lawn is at like two major cross streets right downtown Vancouver. And I walk out and there's already about 200 people on the lawn unfolding their yoga mats. And there's a DJ blaring Florence and the Machine, the dog days are over. And I see these people with these tin foil covered fake Stanley Cups. I'm like, what is going on here? And sure enough, we have a yoga teacher just arrive and because there's hundreds of people, they're mic'd up and they're at the front and we're outside and it's crazy and it's loud. And we're doing warrior, for those of you who know yoga, you don't need to put your hand up if you don't. But we're doing like a warrior pose and people are hoisting their tinfoil Stanley Cups above their head. At one point we stood and like really, like with as much seriousness as we could muster, did three ohms to the goalie to give him strength in protecting the net. And as we're doing this, we have people from the community honking and waving as they're driving by. We literally had people drop their bikes on the side of the road and run over in whatever clothes they were wearing and just join us because it was so fun. And why am I telling you this? Because that's when I got it. So that moment allowed me to have a, a full body experience of what everything I had read about the culture meant. And what that, that allowed me is a story to tell to my friends, to people I meet about Lululemon, about what it really means and about what the culture is. Now, we didn't win the Stanley Cup, <laughs> all right? It was a tough day, <laughs> however, you know, it is moments like that that bring us closer to the community, that continue to grow our culture, and that give people that spark, that thing, um, that make them proud to be part of a company uh, that, that they can share those kinds of stories about. 
So our culture, so we know who we are. I think that story kind of demonstrates not everyone would do the things that we do. We know that, we're okay with that. What we're committed to is being clear enough about who we are so that the people that we're recruiting can make a choice. And they can say, hey, I'm all in for that. Or they can say, no thank you. Thanks, but no thanks. And that's okay to us. Once you get to Lululemon, you'll find that we don't have a lot of rules. We, we more operate with what you would call operating principles. So I would liken that to saying, when you arrive, we'll give you a compass, not a map. We'll say, here are some things that you need to know about how we do things that makes us us. But we wanna make sure that when people join us, they have jobs that are big enough for them. Our store managers, we want them to feel like they're the CEO of their own store. So absolutely, we want them to make decisions grounded in our culture and our philosophy, but we wanna leave the space for them to create and to have big jobs and to really get excited about what they're up to. And finally, our people create the culture every day. So this is a really important thing for us from a recruitment perspective. We know that our culture isn't just something that we say that's on a piece of paper. In every moment, in every interaction, our culture is being created. And ultimately, culture is just really how the work gets done. So as we're recruiting, we're looking for people who don't just think that our culture sounds cool, but who are already living some component of it. So perhaps they're already very interested in developing themselves. Or they may be people who are passionate about yoga and athletics. Or they may be people who, since they were little, thought about setting goals and took that on in their life. But whatever it is, we're looking for the people who are living it today because we know that then they're gonna come in, continue to build that culture with us, and be those brand ambassadors that we're really looking for. So how we'll thrive from a culture perspective. So we don't take ourselves too seriously. And this is a really key aspect of our culture. In, in fact, one of our core values is that of fun. Uh, and, and this is because we actually have a saying at Lululemon that fun is strategic. And we believe that to be true because when people are having fun, when they're more relaxed, when they're living, as Ashley put it, like their greatest life, they're more productive, they're more creative, and the work that gets done is the best work. So we try to model fun whenever we can at all levels in the company. And we also continue to invest in people developing themselves. And what I mean by that is, People will be having fun when they're connected, when they can see how what they're doing every day relates to their own values, relates to their own vision and goals, and they can see that intersecting with the vision and goals of the company. And so we offer various self-development programs so people can start to unpack that for themselves and have an understanding of what really matters to them. And so this is something I just wanted to show you quickly, and not that we're gonna do it right now, but when we start talking about vision and goals, there's, there's an exercise that's kind of like our, our, just like putting your toe in the water of the vision and goals conversation, and it's this, and it's called the circle of knowing what I want. So I just wanted to show you this today to say, if you choose, you could take out a piece of paper, draw a circle on it, consider your life in 10 years, and write inside that circle everything that you want. If something occurs to you that you don't want, you could write it outside of the circle because what you know is you need to notice those things and capture them, but you're gonna focus on creating a vision of those things inside the circle. I offer this to you today not just for yourself, but as an exercise to go back and do with your teams. Because what we find with our people, with our culture, with our recruiting practices, is it's so helpful to know where people see themselves in 10 years so we can connect that vision that they have with what opportunities we can offer them today and we can help them put their whole life together. So we have a link somewhere, I think, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so there, there's a link there that you can go to um, so that you can actually check out these tools and use them if you choose. Ash, back to you about the law of attraction and how this all comes together. Wonderful. So the last thing is really just, it sums up everything that we've talked about so far, actually. And we really believe that we hire through the law of attraction. And what that means is if we're doing all the rest of what we've been talking about right, we're developing leaders, we are helping people to live into that vision for their best life, and we have a culture that's really strong and we're really clear on what that culture is, then naturally the law of attraction happens where people hear these stories uh, and, and they want to take part, they want to be a part of it. 
and also that the people who work in the company are super excited and want to share these stories and, and bring more people in. So that's really, in a nutshell, what the law of attraction is. Uh, how to make the law of attraction work? Well, it only works if we are okay with failure. So we have to really let people know that it's okay to fail. If we're asking them to be entrepreneurs and to take risks and to share themselves, there's going to be some big successes and there's also going to be some misses. And that's okay. So we have those operating principles to help guide us back on track when that happens. The other thing that we say a lot is we want to attract the best and repel the rest. And what we mean by this is not that we're trying to attract all of the A-plus students from Harvard, but that we actually want to attract the people who are going to be the best fit for our company and our organization who will thrive in our environment. And the rest can be repelled or choose not to be a part of it. So in that vein, we're actually going to show you a video that shares a lot about our philosophy and who we are and our culture. And for some of you, you might find that this really does resonate. Worldwide, millions of people are hitting the snooze button, heaving sighs for the day ahead. Thousands of people are powering up their computers under fluorescent light, dreading their daily routine, uninspired by the blandness of their jobs. Hundreds more sit, desperately longing to kickstart a career with purpose. Dozens and dozens are just about to drop a resignation letter on their manager's desk with only an imagination as a net to catch them. Someone might just be crazy enough to do it. Right now, someone's wildest dream is being transformed into a beautifully audacious goal for the first time. Accomplishing it will change her life. Someone's by when is making their skin crawl with excitement. Dreams with deadlines are written on paper. Someone is creating a development plan to have a successor way better than themselves. The most innovative recruiting practices are being cultivated from the universe, from the ether, from the dirt and the puddles splashed on a 5 a.m. trail run. Between sketching the blueprint of her own yoga studio or qualifying for the Olympics, someone is designing the next groove pant. Someone wearing those groove pants on her lunch break is doing crow pose for the first time. Someone is crafting innovation, different, better, more, unignorable because they will change the world. Business plans are being scribbled onto paper napkins for new startups that will elevate the world from mediocrity to greatness. Tough conversations are taking place because feedback in the moment is a stand for greatness. Someone is leaving Lululemon because chasing goals and crushing dreams is the very best way to live. Right now, something is being invented that will change how our generation lives, communicates, and heals. Right now, we are asking you to work smarter, not harder, because we know that long hours come at a cost. Right now, great people are making their mark on the world. Right now, our business is running like no other in the world, and our X Factor is you. Peace, love, join us. Okay, so thank you for listening to everything we had to share today. And just to sum it up, we want to be clear, we want you to be clear about what your culture is and what it isn't. So you can allow your candidates to choose you. Your employer brand is something that's created by all your people every day in every single interaction. And engaged and happy people are, without a doubt, your best recruiters and your brand ambassadors. And so with that, we're going to pass it over to Corey and Natalie to talk to us about Adobe. Good afternoon. So first of all, to Janine and Ashley, thank you. And I appreciate the wonder unders. They are very, very comfortable. Now that was really helpful, I, I, that was really great. It sounds like you guys have a fantastic culture. Thanks for sharing that. So Natalie and I are very excited to be here with you today to spend a little bit of time talking about how we've established a culture of uh, effective talent branding and how we're really helping to, we wanna help our employees to feel like they're empowered as social ambassadors for our brand. 
So I have spent um, the last seven years in, in my role, uh, I, I've been in social media for a long time, and the last seven years have, I feel like I've spent countless hours trying to get the sea level to tweet and to <laughs> blog, and you know how successful I've been? About that successful. <laughs> One of the things that I've learned along the way, though, is that there's this, there, I've been missing the boat. That the opportunity to, to really um, carry the, the flag for the brand didn't necessarily need to fall to the CEO. In fact, what I've learned along my way is that, in fact, in many, in many instances, the, your employees, your day-to-day -day employees, are in fact, oftentimes, they are more socially relevant than your CEO. So I wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about this. Let me, let me share with you a slide that doesn't have a whole lot of context right now. So you're gonna see some percentages, but there's one piece here, the key that's missing. This, is a, this was a study that was conducted by Edelman, um, a global PR firm that talks a little bit about, uh, it, it's, it's actually part of their trust barometer they issue every year. In January of this year, Edelman issued their trust barometer and one of the things they wanted to show was they wanted to explain how it was that trust within, uh, uh, how, how trust was viewed by the public uh, across various responsible parties within an organization. So if you were to take the CEO, how much, how much do people trust them versus somebody that's maybe on the PR team or versus your everyday employee? So there are a few different lines here and I wanna, I wanna start by just asking the simple question. Somebody tell me how many, or which of these lines would you expect would be the, the CEO in terms of levels of trust in these various comp uh, aspects of a corporation? Far right? It's not the far right? Far left, who said that? Okay. Natalie, do you want to come and grab this? Hashtag Adobe Life, you, you win. You're right. So the CEO actually is the far left. Who can tell me the dark blue, they're all blue here, but the darkest of the blues, which, who is the darkest of the blues? The everyday employee. Look at that, look how much more trusted. In some cases, your everyday employee is twice as trusted as your CEO. You see the impact that they, can, that they can have, especially if we create a program within our companies that is focused on empowering them with some of the, some of the great social publishing tools that are available to them. Meet Julianne Cost. Julianne Cost is one of our, uh, she is one of our evangelists that works for the Photoshop and Lightroom team. How many people here use and love Photoshop and Lightroom? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Julianne, when I, when I uh, first started at Adobe, we, I was doing this, uh, this social measurement program, trying to understand and really gain insights into how we were doing with our social programs. And, and really, we wanted to understand, I wanted to understand, were our social media programs really driving revenue for the company? And so we had, we had done some really interesting studies to try to better understand which of our different social accounts were driving revenue and, and which were maybe not doing so well. And I was shocked to see at the very top of our list was not it wasn't one of our branded accounts, it wasn't our at Photoshop Twitter account or our Photoshop Facebook page. It was a person, it was Julianne Cost. Julianne individually, for the month that we were looking, she had driven more revenue by herself with her, and she granted she has tens of thousands of followers, but the millions of followers who were following our branded page, uh, you know, our branded pages weren't driving nearly the revenue that she was. So for me, this underscored this principle that we were starting to see in the marketplace, which was people wanted to know more from the employees, from the everyday employee. She was regularly driving more revenue than our branded accounts. And this was, it was a real revelatory sort of an experience. And what it led to was us creating a program in Adobe that we started to roll out at the beginning of this year. A program that we called the Adobe Social Shift Training Program. 
The Adobe Social Shift training program is built on the idea that we want to progressively take people from the state of being simply socially aware to ultimately being socially, to, to having social excellence, feeling like they are fully empowered to take the social tools that are at their disposal and to talk about their experiences with our brand, to use it within their organization and within their individual um, pr uh, roles within the company to make a difference. We wanted to create not just, we didn't want to have just one Julianne cost, we wanted to have thousands of them. So it became our responsibility to try to put into place a program that would allow that. So the Adobe Social Shift training program is being rolled out across the organization. In fact, I just got back from a trip to Japan, from Japan, China, India, where I got stuck, thank you, Air France pilots for going on strike. Uh, and, and, and we have trained out across the world, in, in, across Europe um, and Asia Pacific, and all throughout our, our US uh, and North American offices as well, as we try to roll out a program that helps our, our, our employees feel more comfortable. So I wanna show, you a, I wanna, uh, show you a quick video. This is an internal promotion video. We worked with our, um, our CMO's office to create a video that would ultimately tease and, and entice our employees to want to get more involved. So I want to share that with you. How many of you want to take the Adobe Social Shift training program? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that's what we've done to roll this out internally. So to date, we can say that we've trained about 30% of our employees across the country in this or one of our other social training programs that, that, we, uh, that we are using in Adobe right now. It's been effective, and we're seeing our employees sharing more and more, feeling more and more comfortable with this idea that they can share without necessarily the concern that there's going to be some swift retribution where they're going to get their hands slapped, which is oftentimes what we find employees a little bit concerned about. So here's the way that we've created the curriculum. It focuses on, uh, in our first gear, and you can see the whole thing is racing themed, our first gear in the social shift curriculum is focused on building a solid foundation. And in that, we teach employees several things, including the fact, or including what our policy is, what our guidelines are. We teach them what it is that Adobe is trying to accomplish with its use of corporate social media. That's for, we want every employee in the company who wants to talk about Adobe at all in any capacity to take that training. For those that want to get a little bit more in depth, we ask that they go through 
either, uh, in fact, both the second and third gear of our training program. The second gear, after they understand the basics of social media and understand how we're using it Adobe, at Adobe, we want them to understand how can they create a strategy that can really help to empower them and what they're trying to do in their, uh, in their area of the business. And from there, the third gear is where we really feel like, to use the analogy, racing analogy, the rubber hits the road once we get to third gear. Because in the third gear, we wanna, we wanna actually identify the business objective that they're trying to accomplish. And we have training modules that are focused on helping them understand how do you use social media for generating leads? How do you use social media to, to raise awareness, to recruit? And so we have a series of these modules that are focused on that. The great part about the program that we have right now, I sit in the, I sit in the, um, the global marketing organization running our social media center of excellence. And what's great about the role that I have is I get to partner with our own talent team here at Adobe. And we take the things that we've done here in this training program, and we want it to be not just the training that maybe you've gone to where you go and you say, well, that was a lot of fun, and then two days later you forget everything you've done. We want to truly activate our employee base once they have been given the necessary training and tools. So I'm going to turn it over to my wonderful partner in crime, Natalie Kessler, to walk through the next part of how we activate. Thank you, Corey. Hi, everybody. When we started our journey about three years ago, and take note of this slide because these are just examples of what we've done to activate our employees. We asked ourselves two questions when we started this journey. The first question was, did we want to tell our talent brand story or did we want to leave it up to someone else to tell our talent brand story, right? And that means, do you want to leave it up to the media where you don't have timing, uh, control, or control over content? And the answer was absolutely, we want to tell that story. We want to enable our employees to tell that story. The second question we asked ourselves was, did we want to own share of awareness, right? Imagine. Adobe is situated right smack in the center of Silicon Valley. We compete with, I think, all of you, right? Um, the hottest tech brands in the, in the world. And we said, do we want to actually have some skin in the game and be able to share that story? The answer was yes. And so that's how Adobe Live began. When we started, really humble beginnings, I kid you not, 400 visitors a month. Wasn't that sad? Fast forward three years later, we're at about 3, 000, we are at about 10,000 visitors per month. And what we're doing also is something that you could try out, is to syndicate your content to other parts of the business. So when we have stories that are posted on our blog, we then syndicate it to our business units, as well as to the internal intranet site, where our, employee, where our employees go and where we encourage them to share. The other thing that we've done and seen very success, successful is that we've had our own employees interview other em employees. So in that brief moment in time, they have a chance to actually walk in someone else's shoes and that creates camaraderie and engagement. Okay, Adobe Live. I remember the day I wrote on my whiteboard, hashtag Adobe Live, and I said to myself, you know, do we really need to be on a great places to work list in order to validate that we're a great place to work? And the answer to me was at that time, well, if you're on the list, great, kudos, but there are many companies who don't get a chance to be on that spot, and that should not stop you from going out there to share your story. And that's how hashtag Adobe Live started. Um, we did simple things like decals. If you see on the screen that says, tell the world what you like about Adobe, hashtag Adobe Live, we literally worked with our facilities teams and got that stuck on walls at high traffic areas throughout the globe because we want to tell our employees that hey it's okay to share you just went for social tri shift training now go out there and share your story right and we also organize quarterly contests for employees design t-shirt contests and so we had one which, which said um, design your Adobe life story and we had submissions from around the world we saw a lot of engagement within a couple a couple of days those shirts were sold Every, every single one of them was sold at the Adobe store and they were gone, right? And the other thing that we do that we found that employees really like is now that they're sharing um, their stories on social, they want to know that you're actually paying attention, right? So what we do is that on a weekly basis, we scour the internet 
to basically look for photos of messages that they've shared. And the way we thank them and encourage them is to basically highlight the best of Adobe Live. And we do that on our social, on our screens. So whether it's in the elevators or um, in the cafes, you'll see their messages there. And when we started, we really had, oh, as I said, say, similar to the blog, humble beginnings, right? So today we hover at about 2 million impressions uh, a month, okay? The Ambassador Program, back in September, we got together 21 employees from 17 different locations. And these were employees that were already sharing stories socially, whether it's on photography, big data, they were already very social. And we said, okay, we'll get this group of people and have them tell our stories. What we do is we pre-brief them about announcements before they become public, and we give them an opportunity to share that, right? Just recently, uh, in fact, at Max, which was at the beginning of the month, Max is Adobe's annual creativity conference where we gather about 5,000 creative professionals from around the world. We sent two employees, had it not for this, had it not been for this program, they would not have had a chance to actually participate. So, and I'm gonna ask you a quiz, so listen up, okay? Uh, so these two employees, one was a quality engineer in San Francisco and another was a photographer and a program manager that was from India. Within five days of them, the whole goal was that, hey, when you go to Max, what I want you to do is share key learnings to your audience and share what's relevant, of course, right? So anyone can guess how, you know, how many million impressions we got from these two employees in five days. Um, just to set some stage, right, when I mentioned the hashtag Adobe Live, we average at about two million impressions a month. So, wild guess. No. Slightly lower. Lower. Okay. One more guess, last one. No, 5.5 million. Okay, so anyway, did anyone come close? No? Okay, so I, was, I had the little bottle there for you, but anyway, so this just shows you. <laughs> um, two employees got 5.5 million impressions. Imagine if you had 10,000 employees doing that, right? Just imagine the power of social, okay? And we're at a LinkedIn conference, uh, my, my partner Joel is right at the back there and he's gonna basically smack me silly if I don't mention LinkedIn. No, um, LinkedIn's publishing platform is a great opportunity as you guys know, because I think all of you right now have the capability to go out there and publish. So go ahead and identify key spokespersons within your company who'd be able to tell that story. For us, if we have um, a difficult, hard to fill position, for example, we have hiring teams and hiring managers go out there and talk about the projects that they're working on. Of course, projects that you know, can be released and, and disclosed publicly. So that's a huge opportunity. And I think uh, Corey had mentioned that we were fortunate in the sense that we were one of seven uh, companies who were asked to become a, a pilot uh, member in this. But all of you have that capability, go out there and share your story. Another one that I would be absolutely remiss to mention is Glassdoor, right? We hear a lot about the source of hire, but we, there's also the source of influence, right? And Glassdoor has the capability to do that for you. Um, I know it's hard to basically send out an email blast to everybody saying, hey, by the way, go out there, put your reviews on Glassdoor. I understand the hesitation. But that shouldn't stop you because that you, Every day we encounter extremely positive uh, employees, extremely uh, positive hiring teams, right? So when, when your passive candidates that you're looking for in LinkedIn decide whether they want to come for an interview or accept your job offer, where do they go to validate? Glassdoor, right? So that's a missed opportunity if you don't leverage that and I highly encourage you to do so, okay? I'll be quick, I know everyone's watching the time. Um, for us, it's great that we share and have our employees share what it's like to be at a beer bash. But then it's not just party all the time because we work hard too, right? Um, so for, for Adobe, um, we care a lot about corporate responsibility and what we want to do is ensure that our employees have the opportunity to showcase a holistic experience of what it's like to work at the company, right? So corporate, corporate responsibility, um, 
having team building events. Um, if I'm going for a conference, I want to be encouraging them to share that story or wellness or work environment. Those are all key, um, key to Adobe. So when you're thinking about the platforms or if you're thinking about uh, activating your employees, think about what's near and dear to your company's heart, right? What do you want to go out and message and make sure it's a holistic experience? Okay, it's my last slide. Um, as Corey mentioned about Julian, never underestimate the power of employee evangelism. We see it every day, and they are your best brand evangelists. Who better than the ones who live and breathe the brand every day? So I'd encourage you to do that because not only will they bring in more employee referrals than you can ever imagine, right? They impact the customer experience, and they are also people who will then, you know, have greater engagement within your organization. Okay. Set them up for social success. You know, not everybody, and I've discovered from the hashtag Adobe Life campaign that we had, not everybody is comfortable on social. Yes, it's true. It's 2014, and yes, there are people who are not comfortable. And so having a social shift training or, you know, going there, teaching them how to do that is really critical because they need a baseline of do's and don'ts of what they should and should not be doing. Okay? And then enable a social culture. Always provide opportunities for them to share their stories and um, I leave you with these two questions, right? Who is in the best position to tell your talent brand story? Is it someone else or is it your employees? And the second question is, do you want to own share of awareness? And if the answer is yes, go and tell your story today. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, I, do we have time for questions? Yes? Okay. So if you have questions for us, um, the Lululemon team and Corey, we are more than happy to take your questions. I know. You have a session in, what, 10 minutes, maybe five minutes? First two to ask questions. <laughs> Woohoo! <First. laughs> Mike's here. Does compensation ever come up? Compensation? Yes, sometimes, and we take that offline. What, what was the question? Um, the question was, does compensation ever come up in social in the social setting, and the answer is yes. We sometimes do get questions, but what we do is we either direct message them or take it via email. So my question is about the social shift that you guys implemented. Um, did you guys just open up all the social media platforms for your entire company to be able to share these, or did you have some sort of third-party kind of internal thing that was allowing them to share and not just be on YouTube all day? <laughs> So the expectation is not that they're sharing through our, through our corporate channels, right. but that they're sharing through their own personal So you just influence handles. them to do that off in their own time and not like at Dur the office? Uh, whether it's at home or whether it's at the office. Yeah. If it's relevant, then we, then we don't have a policy that says that you can't do it. Well, you guys mentioned something about going to SharePoint and sharing from there or just viewing things that your guys' corporate pages have shared or did I hear that wrong? We no, don't, we didn't mention Not SharePoint, SharePoint yeah. no. Okay. Okay, thanks. You guys mentioned you do contests to incentivize. Are there other strategies you have? Because you know you have this training, and I think if I'm an engineer in the business or a hiring manager sales quota to meet, um, that sounds great, but why would I prioritize that over something else? I feel like that's the biggest struggle in trying to empower our hiring managers to take the time that you have to invest to have a good enough message to actually get ROI. So how, what are some of the incentive strategies that you guys have used? Or have, has that been a problem, like actually getting people to activate? Getting them someone faster. <laughs> That's the incentive for them because um, I think for us, um, I'll give you an example. Um, we have a huge uh, big data, data science business that usually doesn't get the limelight it deserves because it's new to our company. And what we've done through social is to try and create that awareness. And yes, we, we have received a lot of awareness in terms of um, you know, potential candidates responding to emails, for example. That's faster. Um, and there's a high level of interest for sure. But to, to address the other part of your question real quick, you know, some of you say some people are busy, they feel like they've got to be doing their job, sales or recruiting, or whatever it might be, and they don't feel like they have the time to necessarily invest in social. We're trying to show them our, our own research using our own, you know, we, we bought Omniture, a, a big web analytics company, and now have Adobe Analytics. The combination of that with our own Adobe social products, it's teaching us, one of the things we're finding is that 
customers are twice as likely to buy if they have a social experience than if they didn't. And so we're trying to help them understand help our managers and our employees understand that this is not a distraction. This is actually helping to facilitate the very thing you're trying to accomplish. Questions are for feedback. Right here in the front. You've had your hands, you've had your hands up for a long time. Actually, what we have. I mean, we we have a very. So the question was: You have a head of social, social, and a head of branding, and what do, what do you do in a company that doesn't have that? And I would say, you know, I can just say from our experience, we are not structured necessarily that way. We don't have a head of talent brand or anything like that. Um, but what I love, what I would just connect to, what I love about what you're saying is you educate and enable for people to be able to do it powerfully. So, you know, we definitely have a culture that inspires people to share and we want people to be out there doing great things and sharing them. But what I'm taking, what I would put together with that, is there's something powerful about the education component to have them do it well. And I think it only takes a, a tiny group to get it started because when we started the hashtag Adobe Live campaign, it was a team of two, believe it or not, a team of two. And what we've seen happening is that as we went about marketing and uh, hashtag Adobe Life and what you could do, we saw other teams taking that on and we didn't even have to in initiate it anymore. And I think that there's absolutely potential to do that. Yeah. I think there's people up there. Oh, Mike. Hi. Um, I also, this is a question for the Lululemon ladies. Uh, I also work in a Canadian marketplace which is a very tiny talent pool mm -hmm. where everyone is trying to draw from us. Um, you advocate that you have your manager sign up for a LinkedIn account. How did you get over the fear that that was going to cause people to poach your talent? Ah, oh, what a good question. question. So I'll, I'll start something and then you, sure. you hop on if you see something else. So something we didn't share today that we do sometimes share that's a little different about us is we actually encourage people to achieve their goals wherever they are, whether they're with Lululemon or elsewhere. And so we, we actually just don't operate from that place. So absolutely, our people, whether they're on Facebook or LinkedIn or just out there in the world, have interest in them and, and have people wanting them to join their company. I mean, people walk into our stores all the time and, and have that comment of, of, come work with me. And for us, it's really about if that person is connected enough to our brand, if they're loving their lives and really enjoying what it creates for them, um, then, then they're gonna stay. And, and if they go and it's the right thing for them, then we actually celebrate that. Yeah, uh, the only thing I would add to that is we were, when we talked to all of our managers and our store managers about getting on LinkedIn and what that could create, I think similar to the Adobe team, we were really focused on what kind of results that could bring back for them and their business and how it could make their lives so much easier. And so I think by staying focused to that positive end goal and showing them and starting to see it actually happen, that was really the focus of it. So it sounds like how you launched that in the communication pieces around that could be key. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Should we go over to the other mic here? Yeah. Back and forth. For the Lululemon ladies, uh, I work for a major film company or studio and this is in regards to the laws of attraction because a lot of our talent or prospectives are interested in just our movies and they just want to work there because of the film. So how do you turn that off and put that into the culture? Um, you know, with Lululemon being a, a brand and a you know a famous brand, so how do you turn that off and attract social as opposed to just your cool brand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that we, and I, I think this is probably true for you too, but we really feel like our brand that you experience in the store is very similar to the experience that you get when you work at. Lululemon as well. So the two are really interrelated and connected. Uh, but there is definitely that education piece that might come through social sharing or even all the different touch points in the recruiting process where we're, everyone is really clear that that has to be an education and a sharing back to the candidate. So we're not just asking them questions, but we're also taking that time to share 
and as we talked about, so that then they are really informed and can make a clear choice that it's the right fit for them. I hear you kind of saying too, so film is cool, <laughs> and so people want to be part of that, part of something cool. Correct. And yet you also, I think, need to, to give some consideration to, in the, in the sphere of cool film, who are you? and communicating that message. I mean, we have people that will walk, you know, want to work for us because our people seem happy. So that's not necessarily a reason that we would hire you. We love that you think our people seem happy and that you value that, but then we also know what, the culture that we're creating and it's those things have to come together. Hi, I'm a recruiter for a smaller company and we've um, implemented some brand ambassador programs in the past and as a recruiter when I share something on LinkedIn I always ask that our other employees also are sharing it. It's very hard to get participation from our internal employees and I think that it's great messaging that you say about it coming from them versus us or the CEO. So how would you uh, recommend us getting more participation and what could we do to, to get that? Yeah. Okay, um, do you have an intranet site? Yes. Right? Um, is there social capability on that site? For them to post? Yeah. So, no. so this is what we've done. Um, so what we've recently done is re-architected our intranet site, whereby we enable employees to also share internally outside the firewalls. So we have now shared components on, on, in, on the inside Adobe page that we have, and we found that that generates a lot of sharing and clicking. So we I don't know if that We do have an internal Facebook page, though, which they would be allowed to do, but they just don't. So you can do it through that. We also, we have, a, we have an email distribution yeah. for employees yeah. who say, I want to be an ambassador of Adobe. Okay. We put them on an email list, and we send them, we'll send them notes uh, a couple times a week with posts that if they're interested in sharing, it's recommended posts, right? The other thing to consider is that there are, thankfully, a lot of technology vendors that now specialize in this. And I, so I'll, I'll give three names in, in no particular order, but if you know Social Chorus, Dynamic Signal, and Everyone Social, all three of those have, they've, they've all changed from being focused on uh, customer advocacy to realizing that employee advocacy and activation is a huge opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. And the platforms that they've built, the, the uh, mobile applications that they have make it so simple for your employees to share. And then what they've done, many, many of them have done, have, they've then gamified it so that it's, it's some, the employees almost have a bit of a contest within departments or within across the whole cor corporation around who is best at sharing and their awards that come along with it. The contest works. Yeah, I would, and I was going to say just one other thing too, is reinforcing it. So even if it starts out small, as you're saying, and there's only a couple people who are doing it, reinforcing that, celebrating them, showing them how their content got engagement so that it starts to build because they're being reinforced for doing it. Okay. Melody? Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we'll be happy yeah, to please. take them.